Hello, everyone, and please meet our new chef to watch, Nazim Khan. He, we've actually been watching him for a while. Hello, Nazim. Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for being here. And we have been watching you really, I think years ago, we, you became a friend of Food Management Magazine when you were working at Virginia Tech. Yeah. And then you went into the healthcare world. So yeah. um, tell our viewers a little bit about where you are now. Yeah. Yes. It, it, it seem, seems like yesterday when mm -hmm. I was in Virginia Tech and especially when the football games are going on all over the school, you know, so. But anyway, um, yeah, right now I work for Bryan Medical Center. I'm their executive chef. We have 5,000 employee based hospital. We got three campus. Uh, we have Bryan Health Science College also. So I manage uh, uh, entire uh, food uh, thought process in, at Bryan Medical Center. So uh, doctor's lounge to employee patient's meal, employee meal, cafeteria, Cafe Express, and also for the student cafeteria. So um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's pretty big, uh, large operation. Oh yeah, and you're always doing something new. You mentioned that you're just unable to stop. Like you don't ever want to stagnate. You don't want to stay where you're at. So talk a little bit about that part of your personality. Yeah, so um, I will go a little bit back all the way to 2000, year 2000. So when I was working with Chef George McNeil, he's a certified master chef from America. So uh, he was uh, our executive chef for New York Marriott Marquis. That time I was a hotel restaurant sous chef. So sous, uh, actually I was a cook and then I become uh, a, a sous chef, junior sous chef to senior sous chef, then uh, senior sous chef uh, in, in the building. So everything's under uh, McNeil watch. So I see how chef work, how his thought pro process is, how he think about the locality, how he look for the fresh stuff, you know, his work process, thought process, you know, everything has a system that chef used to tell us and everything has a rhythm. So if you don't have that rhythm and tuned into the right direction, you'll have a bad music. So you don't want that. You want it to have your music sounds good and enjoyable. Yeah, that so that's, that's the directions that graved into my brain from through uh, George McNeil, you know, so my guru and chef. Um, so, and then after that, I never look back. Even sometimes, you know, in your busy life, you know, sometimes you try to cut corners and okay. try to fast. And then when I try to cut corners, then I, I pause for, for a second. I said, oh, shit, chef is probably seeing me uh, over there. I'm taking a shortcut. Then I have to start all over again. So I cannot do that. And as a human being, you know, I always uh, think about others, you know, how chef can, every, because remember, every profession, we have a footmark to play. Mm -hmm. So like right now, your, your uh, thought process is how you can bring all the information to the out there and how people can enjoy, do the right thing, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, musicians do the same thing, doctors do the same thing, teachers do the same thing. So in our profession as a chef, you know, we always have to think through how we can support our local farmers, how we can get the right product in, uh, in place, how we can talk about sustainability, how we can talk about non-GMO food, how we can make a great food, how we can do ethnic food, how we can think about globally, not only America. So we have to think globally to yeah. bring the flavor of the food to our um, patients, family, and, and everybody. So um, that's my thought process. And I'm, I, I always feel like I'm in a journey and you already know me for a long time. And I, I think if I call you more than you call me, right? I say, hey, Tara, let's go. I'm working on this. I'm working on this. I like to engage the viewers and the customers to think through different. We already know what is inside the box. We have to see what is outside of the box. Right, right. And I really like that. You know, as a journalist, when somebody so cool from the industry comes to me, like, I'm just like, yes, cool. What is he doing? <laughs> And we'll also, you have a busy life, you know? Oh, yeah. I'll try to put some, some links <laughs> down below um, of stories that we've done about you over the years because Nazim is always doing, you're always doing something new. Um, and recently you did a faux food truck, F A U X, the faux truck, <laughs> which right. I thought was so cool. And we got so many um, people clicking on that story to read that because they're like, well, you know, I can't afford a food truck either. But maybe this, you know, if you have a good print shop, created something that looks like a food truck and yeah. your street tacos on there. Just awesome. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a $300 investment. Oh, yeah. So, you know, all my card, hot box, everything we have. We do a lot of catering. So, you know, all the equipment, every hotel, hospitals, everybody has it. So now we have to just think outside of the box, you know, how we can uh, 
um, uh, presented well. So people see, like, you know, this Thursday, you know, my, my another run on, because I cannot do that every day. So we do once a month mm -hmm. and uh, for each campus. So this week in the taco one, and I'm, I'm just already sweating. It's gonna be too much action going on. So I already have like my director, I recruit my director, I recruit my vice president, David Reese, and plus other people to help me out to execute that on this Thursday. Absolutely, so good to have people help you. And you've also done so much with your local farmer's market that I think is really cool. And I'm seeing more healthcare chefs start to do that because you kind of show like, hey, here, here we are and you get to meet people from the community. And I know that's a passion of yours is like trying to get like just your average person in the community to realize like eating healthier foods is gonna make you feel good. Right, right. You know, these days, you know, if you ask your kids where does the rice come from, they can say, uh, Kroger, Hy-Vee, or Walmart, uh, but, but you know, just uh, we need to think through where actually our product coming in. So I always uh, like to involve with our local farmers, local grower. I wanted to see where the food's coming from, you know. And plus, we already know, like nationwide, we got huge, huge. Uh, um, I mean, factory to our farm and garden. Um, it, it is important for a chef to you know do local, uh, and then he can educate local. So if every chef think about their locality, then entire world become or entire country become educated. So I think as a chef, we need to take ownership and educate our uh, patients, family members, kids, you know, how you can enjoy the meal without adding tons of butter, you know, or how we can change your flavor profile, how we can use fresh herbs to your chicken, poultry, to fish, to steak. You know, uh, stuff like that. Simple thought process goes along. How you can use a lemon zest instead of a lemon juice. So it's juice, you use it for something else, but for a flavor component, lemon zest sets a huge tone to any salad, to anything. I know there's so much flavor in there. Yeah. I, I get Hello Fresh and Blue Apron meal kits. And uh -huh. for both of them, especially Hello Fresh, is so big on the zest. You're always zesting something. And right, right. It has because the oil is in there and it's just like amazing flavor. And of yep. course I did that before, but it's like it's it's just really in so many of their recipes, it's like, yep, that's you're gonna use some citrus zest for that right. stuff. Right. And the big thing I wanted to talk to you about is your recent trip. Like you um were in Bangladesh, which right. is your home country. And so when you first came here, like years ago from New York City was your first stop, right? Right, right, okay. right. Okay. So tell us a little bit about that, and then I want to get into the event that you went back there for. Okay. Um, yeah, I, uh, actually, it's a long journey. It's, so it's, it's, it's 1992. I came uh, to Georgia College as a student, so I had an F1 status. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a green card, so it's a student visa, F1. They call it F1 status. So Georgia College, when I came in to study my business, um, I did not know what is what is chef. I didn't even have that English word in my thought process. Wow. So um, um, yeah, there is like cook in in Bangladesh, but they don't they don't really value them during that time. I'm talking about 1992. So yeah. um, and then when I long story short, when I came to New York, did not finish school. I never liked study, but I'm telling everybody do study. Do you know you need you need to have that knowledge. But I was not one of the kids. I was not, a, I was not, I was, I, I'm not going to say that I was a bad kid or not knowledgeable. I, I'm always hungry for a knowledge, but the study uh, was not my thing. Uh, and then um, in a Hampton Sag Harbor, you know, I work in same Japanese restaurant as a, uh, as a cook uh, and kitchen cleaning and stuff. So one time I see Alec Baldwin walks in uh, to that, uh, to that restaurant and tell Tora-san was the Japanese owner, say, Tora-san, how are you? I said, oh my God, what a respect. I said, I wanna be like Tora-san. And that's where is, uh, my thought process came in to become a chef because I want that respect. I want to be that uh, under that hat. And then I learned from him, he, got, he helped me to get my green card and I never stopped back. Then my mentor and guru was Chef George McNeil also was a corporate chef for Rick Skelton. And he just retired from New York Marriott Marquis. Um, so chef actually taught me hold my hand and show me the ladder how to climb and how to think thought process how to think globally how to what time you have to do your tunnel vision and just do what he say so all those thought process actually came from him so i i am who i am because of him i always uh, try to 
put that platform for your guru and people need to respect you know who they learn from and um and after that i never i never stopped now i'm work for brian health i'm a sport chef certified master chef also and um yeah and uh, and trip you wanted to know a little bit about the trip in bangladesh right yeah, yeah so i i uh went october 20th was international chef day so um uh, so bangladesh uh, is right now is thinking globally so they have a nice uh, five star hotel west end to sheraton to marriott so now they are understanding what is chef life before there was no, that type of hotel never exist mm -hmm. so now they have a chef federation of bangladesh just grow up and i'm a, i'm one of their advisor and uh, they told me chef you need to be here on our chef day to energize our young crowds and tell them this is a profession they can hang on to it and then uh, do better at it. So then I, I, I went there, I traveled, and of course I had to take 2000 selfie. And I was like, uh, you know, Corona time, I don't want to get too close, but, but, I, but Bangladesh is doing good Corona wise. So, uh, uh, and, uh, so I had really great time, you know, uh, you know, talking to those young star, how hungry they are about the knowledge, you know, a good education is needed in Bangladesh. Uh, and that uh, Bangladesh's GDP is very high right now because of the garment industry and all other because labor is cheap. So it's continuously growing trend. So now uh, that young generation is very hungry for the new generation of new style of cooking, but that they don't have. And I had the opportunity to talk to them. And, um, you know, I love Bangladeshi food. Street food is my favorite. I did not get chance to eat that much, but I was so busy. Uh, but it was a short trip. And, and and other things that I wanted I wanted to just add on to that uh, that uh, next week on 18 I'm going to London uh, for Asian Curry Award um, uh, 2021. So it is a huge gala event in in London. So I'm one of their um, guests uh, and the VIPs. I'll be attending there. So this is really interesting. You get to see all the picture when I'll be there. I think they're going to give you some hour too. I'm not sure. Maybe. <laughs> oh yeah. So, it's all about curry you said it's all about curry I so if that. you if you go if we google it asian yeah. asian curry award remember india pakistan and asian country were colonized by british so what british did british take the curry and infuse to all all other countries including jamaica oh yeah yeah right that's why they have a jamaican curry because bad people or whoever was convicted days to bring those people and drop it to the island. So that was like Jamaica, Trinidad. Uh, like, you know, what a punishment. Like, please send me to Jamaica. I've been yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, history says that. It's not me like it just made up, you know? Not, not every Jamaican I'm talking about. I'm talking about like, you know, a Caribbean country like Trinidad, Guyana. And I think that some prisoners went to Australia too. And yeah, Australia too. As, as a history lesson. because we're You're absolutely <laughs> right. You're absolutely right. And that's why Kari travels around the world. It's the 4,000. So colonialism is what kind of, and now British people who their, their food notoriously doesn't have a lot of flavor. This is something yeah. that they gained and that they not only brought back to, yeah. you know, United Kingdom, but they brought it back or they brought it around the world too, which is great. Oh, that's why in London, you know, every street you go, there is an Asian curry place, either Thai curry place, Bangladeshi restaurants, Indian restaurant. They love curry. So every year they have an award ceremony. So this year I got invited. So I'm very excited to go next week. First time. Yeah, going back to, <laughs> going to Bangladesh a little bit. While you were there, like what's like the big city there? Like, did you see kind of where like your old stomping grounds, like where you grew up? Like, was it different? Exactly. I was, I was in my old uh, stomping ground. So the capital city of Bangladesh is Dhaka. So remember, Bangladesh is a small country. It's, uh, it's like smaller than New York State, mm -hmm. a little bit smaller than New York State. But we have 165 million people in Bangladesh. So it's a, it's a huge, huge people. But most of them are in Dhaka, the capital city, because everything based on Dhaka throughout the, throughout the country. So all the five-star hotel to the restaurants, the local local restaurants, local things, everything is right there. It's in the center of the city. So traffic is very bad. Uh, government is trying to help. Uh, with, uh, they're building a metro rail. They're building a lot of fly bridge over, over turnaround and all those things. So huge construction going on in Dhaka. So it was, it was fun. It was my stumping ground. I know every street 
but I don't know the surrounding because all high rise building now is to be like two story house is to be like three story house. That's it. Now it's like 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 25. And everything is like next to each other. So it's like very crowded. Oh, man, it's gotta be so weird to see that. Like from yeah. just how much it has changed. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. changed a lot. And you've been you've been back there like between between then and now. You've you've gone like you've brought your family along for a trip. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, we used to go like when Nohad, Nohad is 16 years old, my son. You know, we used to take him like every other year. And then uh, last visit actually we did with the fam family trip, it was on 2016 okay uh, so it was like uh pretty uh, yeah like four or five years yeah. so this year i went by myself go ahead so probably next year we'll do a family trip again yeah and meanwhile when you're at home in the midwest you stay really connected to your culture like many yeah. times on holidays i will see you doing a little karaoke and it's like some traditional bangladeshi songs like right. Right. I, I think you need to have your own music show. <laughs> yeah. I always I always tell people I'm a 50-50. I'm a 50% Bangladeshi, 50% American. Because <laughs> the time the time I came into America was 20, 20 or 21 years old. Now I'm like almost 50 years. So it's oh. like half and half. So half of my part that I grew up in Bangladesh, so those are actually graved into my blood yeah. and uh, in my bloodstream. So and same thing with the American culture too. So combined together, so I'm a melting pot right there. And, and I cannot forget Bangladesh. I cannot forget America. So these are both cultures together on me and I, I enjoy both of them. I love that. That's what it's all about. That's what it should yeah. be, for sure. So we are gonna, boy, I could, I could talk to you all day. And sometimes yeah. we, get, we get to talk in <laughs> the time. To, <laughs> but um, we're gonna obviously keep up with you. And I'm so excited to hear about this London trip now. That's gonna be amazing. Yeah. So yeah, thank you so much. Congratulations on being our latest chef to watch, Nazim Khan. Yeah, thank you very much, Tara. And you know, thanks for remembering me and, and helping me to grow. And uh, you know, and exciting is the part. We all have to be excited. You know, we have so much things around us, you know, negativity. So we need to push it out and think focus and just do the best you can. You got it. Right. Stay safe. <laughs>